Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we will begin chapter 3 of biology which talks mainly about the respiration of the living organisms. We all know that the living organisms need energy in order to carry out their vital activities and so they carry out the respiration process to let the oxygen enter inside their bodies and oxidize or burn the food like the carbohydrates to relieve the energy sufficient for carrying out the vital activities. So in the plants these carbohydrates are manufactured by means of the photosynthesis process while in the animals and humans these are eaten and obtained from the plants or the animals. So, the most important uh, kind of carbohydrates that the living organisms use in order to carry out the respiration is glucose. But before learning about glucose, there is a very important point that we must take notice of. There is a difference between the cellular respiration and the gaseous exchange. They both belong to the respiration, but gaseous exchange takes place when the oxygen goes into the cell while it replaces the carbon dioxide. So there is a gaseous exchange as the oxygen enters and the carbon dioxide exits from the cell. While the cellular respiration is a process in which the cells or the living cells um, break down or oxidize the chemicals which are found in the food in order to release the energy for carrying out the vital processes. So there is a difference between the cellular respiration and the gaseous exchange and we mustn't confuse about that. We are going to talk about the cellular respiration. So we have the glucose Molecule. Glucose molecule is an excellent example to study the cellular respiration on because the glucose molecule is used by the majority of the living organisms in order to carry out the cellular respiration and um, obtain the energy sufficient for carrying out the vital activities. So we are going to deal with the glucose molecule in the next videos to know how the cellular respiration takes place. When the glucose molecule is oxidized through the process of cellular respiration, energy is produced in the form of ATP molecules. This, these ATP molecules are considered the universal energy currency as they are easily spent and exchanged by all the living cells in all the living organisms. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate so first adenosine is adenine and ribose. Adenine is a nitrogen base and ribose is a kind of sugar. It's called a 5 or carbon pentose sugar. 5 carbon pentose sugar. It's called pentose because it has 5 um, vertices like this and 
triphosphate. Here we have tri, means that there are three, and phosphate is phosphate groups. So adenosine triphosphate contains the nitrogen base, adenine, ribose sugar, and three phosphate groups binding together with high energy bonds. So the uh, shape of the ATP is like this. This is the phosphate groups, one, two, three, there are the three phosphate groups, binded by two high energy bonds. They are attached to the ribose sugar, and as we can see, it has the shape of a pentagon, and this is why it's called 5-carbon pentose sugar. And here we have the nitrogenous base. So this is the ATP molecule. This is the molecule which is produced uh, by breaking down of the glucose in order to release the energy. During the serial respiration, we know that this is a type of energy which is produced after the serial respiration is finished and it's also used up in order to carry out the serial respiration. So during the serial respiration the ATP molecules are used as a source of energy to uh, help in breaking down the, glu the glucose molecules. So this ATP changes from ATP to ADP. This difference here, the T is for tri, D is di. So adenosine diphosphate. It means that it loses a phosphate group. So only one bond is broken down. And when one molecule of ATP changes from ADP, an amount of energy is produced. This amount of energy is from 7 to 12 kilocalories per mole. This is the amount of energy produced when an ATP molecule loses a group of phosphate that it contains to change into ADP. So these are the concepts of the cellular respiration. Um, Next we will know how or where does the serial respiration take place and then we will know the steps of the serial respiration and uh, until then I thank you for watching and see you next time.